Hey guys and gals, let's talk mechanical keyboards, right? Um, if you were to spend, or if you're willing to spend a few hundred bucks, you could actually get a pretty decent startup, right? Um, let me show you what you could get if you want to still get a chance to customize on the cheap. So, so my, my goal here is to show everyone a chance to see many, you know, sale items or, or, or particular um, opportunities where you can get pretty cool custom keyboard for a fraction of the price. If you, like I said, if you are a YouTuber, if you are, you know, if you want to invest big, you can. But but my goal here is to show you guys some examples where you can get stuff and, and possibly even customize on your own. All right, so so for today, let's let's talk about Canon keys. If you want to go expensive, you can go expensive. I mean, they they go nuts. I mean, let's say for example, if if you were to take a look at their high end stuff, um, you could go two hundred, three hundred, you name it. I, I mean, you can go crazy. And by the way, this some of this is just the case alone, right? But if you pay attention, you go to the keyboard kits. There are two sets that I want to show you guys, right, and gals. Um, one is definitely the stack sets, right. The other one is the practice sets. So, so think of it this way. The PCB from these sets are identical to the PCBs that you would find on their, you know, high-end case. The only difference is you're not paying for the case, right? You're just paying for the PCB. You're paying for the pieces to make the case. And then, of course, you're still missing switches. You're still missing stabilizers. You're still missing keycaps. But it depends on you. You can get those fairly cheap. And then, of course, it's up to you to have any kind of versions that you want. That That's up to you. But for this conversation, right, I want to talk about the Practice 75. So so I bought this, right? So so I'll show you what I've done. I'm not going to show you how to build it out because cause there are a lot of other videos, other YouTubers that, that can do that. I want to show you some of the stuff I've done to it to make it even more personal to me. And, of course, if you all like it, then, then you could do it as well, all right? I hope you guys can see my screen better now, right? So check this out. This is it, built out, right? Folks complain about a few things. They complain about, hey, it's kind of hollow because, because you know, um, it is truly hollow. That there, it's not a case around it. It's not acrylic. It's not aluminum. It's not, you know, it, it, it is what it is. It's literally a practice setup. But like I said, the PCB is still top notch, right? So what you see here, right, is if you take a look, this is a blue switch. Most of you hate blue switches. I, I get that. But that, that's that's not what I want to show you. What I want to show you is that I actually made it hot swappable. Now, there are two ways for you to make it hot swappable. This is soldered on. Right? So this was not hot swappable, but... You can make it hot swappable. So there are two ways of doing this. One way is definitely the Milmax setup. That could get expensive because, because the cheapest I've come across Milmax is roughly about 30 cents per, you know, per rivet. And every um, switch has at least two rivets, if not, you know, four rivets, counting the middle five rivets. Uh, five holes, four rivets each, right? So, so you've got that. Well, actually... It's only two rivets, two plastic, and one middle. So, so at the end of the day, it's still two rivets. But if you were to count how many, you know, keys you have times how many rivets times 30 cents, it adds up. Especially when the board is only 50-something bucks. So what I've done, I actually had a broken um, Red Dragon, right? Um, I think it was a 552. That has its own rivets. So what I've done was I've desoldered all of that, and I shoved it into here. Um, if you were to take a look at um, Facebook Marketplace and stuff like that, you could probably find the same exact keyboard for roughly about 20 bucks, maybe cheaper, all right? Um, since mine was broken, I, I wanted to play, so so I took all the rivets out, I put it into here, and voila, now it's hot swappable. At the same time, I actually used the, um, the switches that came with it. Once again, I lubed it, so that way, you know... I've done that, I've done that, right? So so those are the kind of things that you would you may see people do, right? Or you may not. 
Um, definitely lubing the switches you will see, but but making hot swap using red dragons, probably not. I'm hoping to to, to build that into a a a thing for everyone else. All right, so that's one mod. I also did the you know the stabilizer mod, like like the band aid mod, right? I've also done the um. I've actually lubed this the, the stabilizer as well. Those are fairly common. Here are the different things that I've done to this. All right, so. Next, what you're going to see is I put feet on here. So what the problem is, is, is this is a pretty good keyboard, but it's fairly flat. So when you use it, I find that it's very difficult to use because because my hand hurts after a while. Maybe I'm used to the, you know, five degrees, six degree. I, I'm, I'm just using, I'm just used to cases that are much higher. So I got these, right? And, and take a look on, I mean, it's eight bucks. I mean, you can have any color you want. I, I happen to choose the black one. I I then drilled two little holes. I measured up everything. I drilled two little holes and I locked it on. And what that does for me is it gives me an angle that, that, that I appreciate and I enjoy. Okay? So that's mod number two. The other mods, the other mods like, like the switches and everything, I consider as one set of mods. Okay? So the next thing is... is this material, I believe, is, is a PCB material, the top and bottom, right? And then, of course, the PCB itself, together, even with all these screws, are pretty light. So what I wanted to do was, was make this keyboard a little bit heavier. To do that, I actually bought um, weights on it, right? And, and I just stick it on. Let me show you. So if you take a look, um, you, I, I bought this from Harbor Freight, and this is meant for wheel weights, by the way, right? Um, I thought that, hey, this is the cheapest place I can get it. And, and, and it works the same. So if you take a look, I mean, all I did was I slapped it underneath. I could inadvertently put it inside so that way you don't see it. But yet, the weight is so much better. And, and, and the reasons why the weight is important to me is so that way when I'm typing, it doesn't move back and forth as much because cause there is a little bit of heft to this. Right? So with that being said, this setup will not break the bank for you, right? right? So, so let's say, for example, the keyboard itself is 55 bucks. So let's say 60 bucks for shipping and everything, right? Um, if you were to get yourself a Red Dragon where you can steal the rivets, make it hot swappable, right? If you were to get the switches from it and you were to get the caps from it, you would spend an extra 20 bucks on top of that. So you're talking about 80 bucks at the moment, right? These feet, as you see, they're like eight bucks, right? So let's say 90 bucks. And then the weight itself is another ten bucks, a hundred bucks. For a hundred bucks, this is actually a pretty good setup. Now, I didn't count the lube or anything like that because let's be honest. Um, if you're into this, you're gonna have you're gonna buy your own lube anyway. So so I I, I don't consider that into the price. But for a hundred bucks, this is a pretty good setup. Now, the reality is is it is hollow. Right, so so you're not gonna get as great of a, a a feel like you would if if you know if it was all covered up. But for the price and for you know parts that that are made that are readily available, I think it's worth a try. You know, at, at minimum you get a you get a customized mechanical hot swap um, setup for under for about a hundred bucks. And, and I, I dare say that if you were to try this versus, say, a Red Dragon, or you were to try this versus an Ann Pro, a Ducky 1 2 Mini, you, you name it, I guarantee you this is going to be better than, than those. Now, there are reasons why people do the Ducky, the Ann Pro, and stuff like that because they don't want to touch it. But this lets you touch it, lets you play around, let you solder, let you do a whole bunch of stuff. At a fraction of a cost, right? Later on, I, I will show you guys what I do with my, you know, my my um, my Ida bow, my drop, my you know, like, like like my KVDs. But but at the moment, I just want to show you what what you could do with a very small amount of money, but yet still get a pretty good board. Okay. So with that being said, um, I'll stop here, let you guys mull over it. Put the um, comments down below what you thought, right? What you would do to to, to even make it even better. I I love to get everyone's input because because ultimately, 
I want to open up everyone's eyes to, hey, what, what are the possibilities of, of upgrades, of changes, of, of stuff to make it yours, but yet make it really good. Okay? All right. Bye.